Hello, Garmin Hotel friends. I'm with you in the wilderness here. Today, I would like to show you what edible plants you can collect in your area. The nature is abundant any time of the year, and it doesn't matter there is a, a winter right now and cold, coldest months here in Ontario, Canada, but we can still enjoy the, the treasures of the nature. We can still find beneficial edibles in the wilderness and enhance our food experience, improve our health and benefit our well-being. You might agree that in the winter time it's not easy to find edibles. You might seem they are covered by the snow or if there is no leaves on the trees, but first of all Look at the evergreens, they clean the air around us all 12 months in a year. And when other trees and bushes are in a dormant state, first what we have to focus in the winter is evergreens. And what I can start with is the pine tree like this. Have uh, these pretty needles that we can use as the source of the vitamin C. This particular tree is the white pine. You can also collect the, the needles from the European pine, from the red pine, and uh, pretty much from most types of the pine trees. I certainly like the white pine because of the longest needles, and they are not prickle, they are very soft, and so it's very easy to work with them. I take only needles, but you can take them with the tips too. For example, uh, I only take small tips with the needles and put it in my forage bag here. So I collect a bunch of them with the tips or without the tips, with, I mean without branches, like these small branches. Uh, also could be used. You would need to collect a good bunch of them. See, already when I started to, to cut them out, they started to release this smell, this very fine smell of the pine. And actually already by chewing them, you can feel this very slight acidity of the vitamin C. Yes, you can chew raw needles and already swallow the, the vitamin C from them without any processing. They taste delicious to me. So where else you can use pine in your cuisine? You can simply brew the pine needles tea. You can advance to cooking the uh, pine cough syrup to clean your respiratory tracts. You can uh, like infusing the needles in the apple cider vinegar or making the uh, um, drinkable vinegar by grinding the pines, infusing them in the apple cider vinegar, straining them out and then drinking that vinegar infused with the pine essence. You can also roast trout with the pine inside so that your trout infuses the pine flavor. Or you can go further, you can dry the needles, make a powder from them and uh, use that powder into any of your uh, like smoothie a morning cereal or uh, sprinkle the ice cream. That's how amazing the pine is. So I'll say goodbye to the uh, pine tree. And I'll just turn to this side and we'll walk to the uh, cedar trees.
This is uh, the white cedar with uh, this beautiful and sacral in uh, native cultures leaves. As soon as you rub the, the leaves, rub them of each other, they smell amazingly. Don't you want this smell to be spreading out in your uh, bedroom, or in the bathroom, or in the kitchen, especially during the winter time? So, same as with the pine needles, you can pick up the cedar leaves, brew the cedar tea. When you make tea of the cedar leaves with sage, you make beneficial elixir that cleans your body from all of the winter infections. How you can use it in food? You can marinate your steak on the bed of the cedar leaves so that uh, the steak will uh, extract good medicinal abilities and extract the flavor first of all. When we eat the steak we don't think about medicines, right? But first of all we have to extract the nice uh, cedar flavor to eat the steak. I'm not the steak eater but uh, it's up to you guys, you can also still eat good meat, I mean grass-fed meat, and uh, use the cedar leaves to enhance, enhance the flavor of your meat. Why not? So I thank this cedar tree for uh, giving me the chance to pick some of the leaves. I'm very thankful uh, to the nature. And I go ahead to find berries. Yes. Even in the cold season, you can still find berries on the bushes. So stay tuned and uh, help me to kind of sustain this cold here. It's very humid, that's why my fingers getting frozen. And that's why I was wearing the gloves when I was showing you the pine needles too. So please bear with me. Hi friends, I'm back with you at this high bush cranberry or another called welder rose or the uh, variety of the viburnum there are several varieties of viburnum and not all of them are good for picking up you might have seen very beautiful bushes producing exactly the same, looking exactly the same berries. But I wouldn't suggest to use those. So the native viburnum that grows in wild is the one that you have to find and pick the berries from. My fingers are trembling because of the cold. I can chew them right away. The, the flavor is kind of sweet with slight bitterness. And there is a flat seed inside, as flat as this. So this is the berry and this is the seed, just to compare. You can spit out the seed, or you can swallow the seed. There is nothing uh, wrong with uh, eating with the seed. What's beneficial is the juice from the berries. But the flavor is not for everybody's taste. As this berry is very popular and very traditional back in Ukraine, and my grandma has always kept these berries in a house as a home remedy. The bushes grow up to this up to six feet. This one is taller than me and of course well 
I'm standing on a hill, but that's how tall is the bush. What you can do with these berries is to clean them up from all of this woody stuff and cover with sugar. Cover with the sugar, put it in the fridge, let the sugar release the juice from uh, these uh, high bush cranberries. It's pretty much fermenting, fermenting the berries in sugar. That's how easy it is to preserve them. And then, whenever time comes, when you feel like a flu symptoms, you just take a tablespoon. Actually, one tablespoon is not enough. Take three or five tablespoons and uh, enjoy the juice from them. Of course, you can apply uh, these berries to any jams. I have uh, added uh, these berries to the sauerkraut. You can add them to any fermenting uh, vegetables when you play with fermentation. Actually, give me a comment if you're interested more about fermentation and I will release more videos. I'm really curious what you think about what I'm doing. So don't hesitate to give me your opinion, give me your feedback. Because I create this stuff for you guys and I'm interested to know what would you like to learn. So I'm very looking forward to, to hear from you. You can collect high bush cranberries starting from the fall, as soon as the leaves started to fall from the bushes. But they're becoming sweeter when they hit by the frost. So in the winter, they are more flavorful than in the fall. It's not the first time when the coldness, the frost, enhances the flavor of the wild foods. And uh, high bush cranberries are the best example to experience this difference in the flavor. I'm in this area, uh, probably 500 meters from uh, where I was shooting the video about high bush cranberries. And I was looking for these treasures, which are not easy to find because of the snow. But I was lucky enough to discover these mushrooms. These are the turkey tail mushrooms. When you look from the top, they look exactly like turkey tails with this pattern. See? Exactly like turkey tails. How would you identify them? First of all, very picturesque and uh, bright seen ornament. Okay, on the top. On the bottom, they should have pores. Not accordions, but the pores, very, very tiny pores. That's the typical turkey tail mushroom. Very, very, very beneficial uh, against the cancer. It's already proven and the research is still, begin, still being going on uh, about the anti-cancerous properties of this mushroom. But we can uh, use it in our kitchen. As easy as that, we can uh, dry the turkey tails Actually, well, before drying, you can cook soup from the turkey tails right away. You can dry them and then store and cook from the dried ones. And when you dry them out, you can make a powder and use that powder in your daily dishes. Again, in smoothie, in uh, cereal, in your porridge and... A sprinkle uh, 
in, on, in, on your salads too. So where to find the turkey tails? On the old logs that stay in dead for quite a while, I mean several years, you will easily find the turkey tails grow along the old logs. What I found is that you can easily enjoy the, <laughs> the flavors of the turkey tails right away. When you chew them, because they are quite hard to chew, okay? You can use them as a chewing gum. When you chew them, you will feel this uh, flavor of uh, the real mushrooms. As I mentioned before, do not pick those uh, mushrooms that grow same as turkey tails, but they are more monotone in the color on the top. And those that have bigger pores on the bottom, those not real uh, turkey tails. So now I'm here close with you, very close to the uh, turkey tails. You can see them uh, colored as light as this. And uh, let me pick an uh, example from here. same structure but much lighter probably because this place is exposed most to the sun and when we go along the log we approach this spot with the most colorful species and when I slide along here, you can see how the pattern changed to be more greenish, silverish. That's how beautiful their colors become. So when you eat them, you enhance your body with antibacterial and antiviral properties just add turkey tails to your cuisine oh i'm with you up to this last treasure for today the snow has been increasing look at this weather here around the town but let me finish my edible walk by introducing you to the juniper berries. January, February is the best time to enjoy the juniper berries because that's when they become the most potent and most ripen. You can see them with uh, this bluish, silverish cover on them. And uh, later on, uh, when uh, the spring starts to approach, they will get dropped from the branches. In the fall, they still not ripened yet, but they become ripened Mm. I enjoy flavor so much. Right immediately, it's so sweet. With this tangy flavor of of the conifers, but this sweetness. How I use uh, juniper berries in my cuisine? 
I have added them to the sauerkraut. I cooked rice with juniper berries, same as Persian people cook rice with uh, rising and with uh, barberries. Barberries are very traditional in, in Persian cuisine as addition to the rice. So I added the juniper berries to the rice and the rice came out pretty flavorful from the juniper berries. So it's up to you, use your imagination how you can combine the flavor of uh, the juniper berries with your meals. I also I added juniper berries to the uh, um, when I marinated the fish. What they do for your body, uh, as from medicinal point of view, they release the uh, acidic toxins from your body. I've heard that not all of the uh, juniper berries are edible, not from the all juniper varieties are edible. First of all, not every juniper you will see around will be producing berries. You have to approach the bushes very close to see the berries on them because they're not visible from the distance. And then unknown berry. Okay. I take one berry. If I don't know this juniper tree or bush, but I still would like to taste the berry. I chew right away. If I feel unpleasant taste, I just spit it out. Spit it out and then collect my saliva in the mouth. Clean the mouth. Okay? This way, even if you get some minimal amount of the toxins in your body, you spit it out. If you have some drink with you, just rinse your mouth and spit it out. You will not get poisoned from one random berry that you might have uh, bitten on your wild edible walk. Otherwise, enjoy your time in the nature, collect juniper berries, and uh, if you have any doubts about uh, the edible that you might think or the plant or part of the plant that you can see in the nature and you, you have a doubt if it's edible or not, send me a, a message, write a comment below this video and let me know how can I help you out so that you will be more comfortable in eating wild edibles, enhancing your meals with the wild nutrients, enhancing your immunity, because every wild edible you find in the nature has immune supporting capabilities. This is a proven fact, you don't have to doubt it, because the wild edibles survive all of the, the weather conditions, the conditions of the viruses that fly around you all the time, conditions of the contaminations, condition of the pollution. They all experience that over the hundreds of years. So they already hardened themselves enough how to survive through. They have very strong immunity by themselves. So when we eat the pieces of these plants, they also enhance and strengthen our immunities. That's how it works. We are the parts of nature, they are the parts of nature. We, we, we consist of the same, and, uh, same uh, chemical elements as they do. I will regularly post these wild edible walks because still, you, you can still find wild edibles in every season. And uh, why I started to do that? When we uh, learn from nature, when we 
flavor our meals with wild foods, when we add wild foods to our cuisine, we become better attached to the land we live on, better attached to the mother nature, and this way we become more independent. Independent, self-sufficient, self-reliant, so that we can stay connected to our community. So, um, I'm looking forward to hear from you. That's pretty much my purpose of uh, making these wild edible walk videos. Please subscribe to my channel and let me know how can I do it better for you. What else you would like to know about wild edibles? I'm looking forward to hear from you. Thank you for watching from Gun How To.